Okay, we're going to continue now uh, with TV on slide five, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's a PowerPoint slide. After I told you and showed you this arrow showing you that the least retained information is oral information, where you don't see any words, you just hear somebody saying it, all the way up to completely visual. The visual is the most retained. So here we have a chart now, which I think uh, you'll be able to remember better because, like we said, it's better than just showing that arrow. So we have oral and visual information uh, with the percentage retained. And this just goes to show you that we have the least amount of retention uh, with oral. You can see that on the left. This is a bar chart. And then in the center, you have visual. Visual alone. Uh, but now you have visual and oral. And you can see that that's about that's about 80 percent. Uh, the oral is about 15 percent. Visual alone is um, uh, almost 20 percent. So you have about 35 percent between oral alone and visual alone. But if you put them together, you have 80 percent. So I might have uh, just misled you a little bit in the prior slide where it shows. Um, visual alone uh, being easier to retain. There's, there is something very different about visual, uh, but when you add some kind of sound to it, it can help you. Uh, so I, I w would rather that you look at this with actual, this came from uh, Jerome Bruner, as cited by Paul Martin Lester, in uh, an article called Syntactic Theory of Visual Communication. Uh, now we move on to six, where we have the birth of television. Uh, although the electronic version uh, of television was demonstrated to the public by, now this is the guy, Philo Farnsworth, in 1928. So he, he's considered the one who invented electronic television. Uh, quote, technical difficulties, corporate competition, and World War II postponed its widespread introduction to the public until 1946. Uh, like I said, it, it got introduced in 46, but it wasn't until, oh, maybe two years later that people started buying them for their homes because uh, slowly but surely prices were starting to come down. Uh, but it was, uh, um, we're going we're gonna to see... Um, how this was actually shown to the public uh, by Sarnoff, the man that uh, who is always involved in everything. You'll, he'll, his name will pop up. Um, so in 1945, uh, the first experimental microwave relay system was introduced by Western Union between New York and Philadelphia, and this distribution system transmitted communication signals via radio along a series of towers. What does this sound like? This is starting to sound like perhaps cell phones, but this was way before cell phones. So between 1945 and 1948, the number of commercial television stations grew from 9 to 48, and the number of cities having commercial service went from 8 to 23. Uh, television sales increased by 500 uh, percent between 45 and 48. So you can see uh, the interesting thing, and I want you to think about this a second, uh, and this is true about all technology, is that it goes to the cities first. So you're going to get um, dissemination on the East Coast, on the West Coast, uh, you'll see Chicago, uh, back then was called the second city. It was the second largest city in the United States. Those were the three basic areas that used to get everything first. Um, it's sort of like the coronavirus, I'm afraid to say. Uh, the big cities are getting it first. We're talking about um, density. Did we lose this? No, it's going. I've lost my picture here. I'm going to stop it. 